Hi, I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get this midweek message to you this week. I had an issue earlier in the week called posterior vitreous detachment, which is, uh, it sounds worse than it is. It's similar to uh, having a retin retinal tear or retinal detachment in that some of the symptoms are the same, the shiny, the light, uh, the floaters. <clears throat> and so I had a little issue earlier in the week that will take about three weeks to three months for the floaters to disappear and the cloudiness to dissipate. But I'm um, here now and uh, feeling better and being able to see. Uh, and so I wanted to bring this midweek message to you. And as most of you know, if not all of you know, we are going to have worship in the sanctuary uh, this coming Sunday at the 10 a.m. service. We also will be live streaming. And so for those of you that would prefer to live stream and are concerned at all about coming on Sunday, please feel comfortable staying at home. <clears throat> In fact, I've heard, as many of you have, such extremes with all of uh, the opinions of what's going on with the coronavirus and how we should be responding. And I saw in the news this morning, 48 states have either reopened or are planning on reopening, at least partially. And... Uh, I've been in uh, conversation with our bishop, and also not only in conversation with our bishop, but also what the governor's uh, executive orders have been. And it's one of the reasons I feel that we can move forward. I had to submit a list of protocols or guidelines <clears throat> to the diocese, and, uh, and they approved them, and, uh, and so we're moving forward with that. And going back to the people on either extreme of the issue, some people that want to totally discount the coronavirus, even say it's a, a, a conspiracy or it's not as bad as people say, or it doesn't exist uh, in terms of being a, a real serious situation. The other extreme, which is, uh, you know, we need to totally hunker down. We need to be isolating. We need to not uh, be out in public and then you've got everything in between. We're trying to meet the most number of needs that we can meet for our congregation, which is on the one hand for people who need or want to isolate, particularly those with uh, compromised health. You need to stay home. You need to stream. You need to be overly cautious. For those who are ready to just throw away everything and go back to quote unquote normal, that's not quite where we are yet either. Uh, we are going to begin worship with social distancing, with people wearing masks, except for those in worship leadership, when they are singing or when they are speaking, uh, they will take their masks off for that, but everyone else needs to keep their masks on. We're going to have the ushers helping with social distancing and releasing people for communion, bread only. There's a number of precautions we are taking. We're providing masks for those who don't have them or didn't bring them. For those who uh, need to use hand sanitizer, if they don't bring their own, we will have hand sanitizer. We're asking people to not use the restrooms unless it's an emergency. <clears throat> as many precautions as we can take in order to provide worship for those who are willing or even more than willing to come to worship and wanting to come to worship and be together. Let me just share a scripture that as I thought about these two extremes and trying to uh, to meet people's needs really is what we're trying to do. Those who have the emotional, physical uh, need to stay at home, you need to stay at home. For those who have the emotional need to come and be a part of uh, a worship on Sunday morning and uh, be with one another, uh, we want to provide that as well. And so uh, the scripture that came to mind was 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And the topic, which is not uh, terribly popular today, it's food offered to idols. And what happened was uh, one side was accusing the other side of being uh, too free. And the other side was saying, uh, you're causing stumbling blocks. You're causing people to uh, struggle. And uh, Paul basically said that we need to base, in effect, treat one another with sensitivity, with care, uh, that we're part of a community. Not everybody stands in the same place with an issue that has nothing to do with what God's commands might be outside of the fact that we care for one another. In fact, 1 Corinthians 8 is where this happens. And when you get to 1 Corinthians 12 through 14, it talks about being the body of Christ and working together and be mutually 
of building. And then right in the middle of that, of course, is 1 Corinthians 13, which is the love chapter, where we love one another. And so because we are different people, because we're made up emotionally, physically, and even our ages, we're different. And because of our ability to need to be around other people, not need to be around other people, introverted, extroverted, uh, and different people's perspective on what's going on with the virus, the real key here is to be caring towards one another and to be praying for one another and to be community as much as possible, whether that be through media, such as the written word, such as midweek messages like this, such as through streaming and Zoom meetings, or whether we gather together as a community, again, still social distancing and taking precautions, we just need to be caring of one another. Uh, because what we're seeing right now is we're seeing a continued reaction and possibly an overreaction to what's going on. We've seen borderline fights, borderline riots, rebellions, protests. Uh, we're seeing all kinds of reactions. We're seeing people who are becoming more fearful of what's happening to them economically or what's happening uh, in our community economically and allowing that to dominate. And what we have to do is say, first and foremost, God's calling me to be a good steward of what he has given me emotionally, physically. That he's calling us to be a good steward of what he's given to us as a community in the body of Christ, to care for one another to be sensitive to one another, and to be at peace as much as possible, as much as it depends on you, what Paul writes to Romans, and the overarching concern to love one another. And so, as we continue to move forward, we're going to continue to take steps that are allowable by the governor, allowable by our bishop. We're going to continue to support, encourage, pray for one another. We're going to continue to seek God's will for our community and be, on the one hand, responsible. On the other, we're seeking to move forward for the sake of the gospel. And so not all might agree with what we're doing at St. Luke's, and that's okay. Uh, what you should be concerned about is what's best for everyone. And also in that is what do I need to be doing to take care of myself physically and emotionally right now? And one thing that we need is worship. The Lord encourages us to worship, which is why streaming is essential for those who are not comfortable with or can't come to worship with us on Sunday morning. And so as we continue to move forward, we will try to do wisdom. It may mean that in a few weeks, come September, October, which some are predict predicting that uh, this virus will resurge, we may need to shut down again. We don't know what the future holds. We're trying to re respond responsibly and in a godly way, right now, to what is before us. And in conjunction with the law, the governor, and combined with uh, what our bishop says is both permissible and the steps that we should be taking to be responsible and careful, we're taking all of that into consideration and we're trying to offer worship as best we can uh, to people that want it, either streaming or in person, with social distancing. And so what I would ask you to do is to continue to pray for those of us that are gathering, to continue to pray for those who are at home, for those who are struggling with loneliness or depression or the isolation is beginning to get to them, for those who are struggling economically, and for all of us. We need to be prayerful. We need to be sensitive to what God's word and God's call is on our lives, no matter what the situation is. We need to seek him and to love him and to love others with his Holy Spirit bringing us that love beyond ourselves, that peace beyond ourselves, and even joy amidst the challenges that we face. Again, it's not easy. It's a challenge. Uh, but we are able, not because of our own strength, not because of the wisdom that we have, earthly wisdom, but because we seek to follow and honor the Lord because we seek to honor him and love one another and that's our goal right now so please be patient and please be prayerful and I will continue to pray for all of you and my love is with all of you let's pray Lord God we thank you for the gift that we have at st. Luke's 
we thank you for this community of Hilton Head and, and Bluffton and the Low Country. Lord, we thank you for our state, which is faring better than many states. But Lord, we do lift up uh, not only our community and the state and our country, but the world amidst this coronavirus. Lord, there are many who are suffering during this time, suffering physically, suffering emotionally, suffering with a family member who has the virus or has died because of the virus. Lord, we're fearful because of the economy and what could happen to uh, individuals, families, ourselves, amidst the economic struggles that we all are experiencing right now. Lord, we pray that you would send your spirit upon those who are doing research for those who are caring for uh, those who have the coronavirus. Lord, that, that you would protect them, that you would give them wisdom and discernment and clarity. Lord, that you would find, give us the ability to find a cure or a vaccine for this coronavirus. And in the meantime, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might bear your fruit in all that we do and in our dealing with one another and our caring for one another. And Lord, we pray that in the months ahead that we would emerge a stronger people for the sake of your gospel, for the sake of your kingdom. Bless us and keep us, Lord, as we seek to honor and glorify you and love one another. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.